stunning illusion that transforms your commercial space, a holographic display is the cutting edge of illusion technology. In this video, we're going to show you how you can build it using an ultra-thin and bright Samsung OLED TV. Optionally, you can order it from us for fast production and delivery. You can choose any frame to match to your wall and combine it with two sheets of dielectric beam splitter glass to create a Pepper's Ghost illusion. You can display anything on it and it creates an infinity mirror effect. The dielectric mirror provides maximum transparency for flawless picture clarity, providing a bright view of the content you display. Hi, I'm Hannah. And I'm Bailey with Two Way Mirrors. We specialize in manufacturing displays for high-end applications, such as architecture, exhibits, and upscale commercial renovations. In this video, we'll outline exactly what you'll need to create your own holographic display. For your convenience, we've left additional guides under this video or hit us up on our website, twowaymirrors.com. Let's start building. Step one, measure the TV's overall size. We used a 65 inch Samsung TV. We measured the overall length of the TV, which came out to be 53 and a quarter by 30 and a half inches. This gives us our base measurement before we add the thickness of the frame to the overall size. The frame thickness is two and a quarter. Then you take this thickness and multiply it by two and you do it so that the TV sits inside the frame. So if you are doing this project at home, all you need to do is measure the thickness of the frame you are using and multiply it by two. Therefore, our measurement comes out to four and a half. Then you'll add that measurement to the overall TV size. This creates the overall frame size that you will be cutting in the next step. The overall frame size we have is 57 and 3 fourths by 35 inches. Step two, finding the routing measurements. The Samsung logo on the TV sticks out. So we use that as the most outward point for routing. Using a square, make sure you are not measuring at an angle and you're providing the straightest line possible to get the most accurate measurement of the distance. You measure from the most outward part of the Samsung logo to the black digital bar on the inside of the screen. In this case, where the screen starts. This step is important because every TV is different. As you can see, initially we wrote down 7 16 because that was the size of the measurement from the logo to the green screen. However, we wanted to incorporate an IR repeater, so we added a 16th for the IR. The measurement will change for your project at home depending on the size of the IR repeater that you are using. Step three, cut the frame sticks to size. This step is simply cutting eight frame sticks to size at 45 degree angles. You need eight frame sticks total because you're making two separate frames to glue onto each other, which we will tackle in a future step. But make sure you cut all frame sticks. You will need four sticks at 57 and 3 fourths and four frame sticks at 35 inches. First, we cut the 57 and 3 fourths frame sticks. Now we are cutting the 35 inch frame sticks. Step four, route the frame to the Samsung logo bevel. First, set the height of the routing blade. You can use the scrap from the frame that you are using to test the height. Ours is set to half an inch. You will want the height roughly a 30 second under the lip. Basically, you want it as tall as possible without damaging the lip because you could possibly see it in the mirror reflection. We place the frame stick that we are routing up to the TV where it would be sitting. Then you can slide it back and place the masking tape slightly larger than the area of the logo. This will mark where you want to route. Step 5. 
Step 5. Trim off the texture design on 4 of the 8 frame sticks. Using a table saw, trim off the design on 4 of the 8 sticks, 2 of each size. As you can see, we are lining up the frame stick to the blade with just a little bit hanging over. We are doing this to create a perfectly flat surface to glue the TV frame on top of the front frame. The final product will be two frames stacked on top of each other. If you're doing this yourself and using a different frame, you still might want to do this step because it will glue and hold stronger, therefore providing a safer and stronger outcome. Step 6. Gluing together the TV frame. Line up the four corners so they fit together. Then use clamps to hold them in place. Once you have them secured, use Type On 3 wood glue to adhere to the sticks together. and wipe away any excess glue that squeezes out of the frame. We like to use a microfiber towel when doing so. Step 7. Remove the frame from the table and scrape off the dry glue from the bottom of the corners. We scrape the glue off the bottom of the corners for a more professional product and it keeps the corners flat. You can skip this step if you would like, but we do this with all of our projects to make them look more professional. Step eight, measure the frame bevel for the size of glass to use, then cut the glass to size. Measure from the inside corner to the inside corner of the frame where the glass will sit. We subtract a millimeter to ensure the glass will slide right on in, but you can also cut it to complete accuracy to minimize any wiggle area. We fill hourglass on the table by hand. We use handheld score cutters with CRL suction cup straight edge tools to get a precise line and measurement. Then, you can break the glass with any type of handheld glass pliers. If you want to skip this step and order the glass straight from us, you can easily do so by going to twowaymirrors.com and using the price calculator on top of the page. We cut our glass within a 16th tolerance, so it will be 100% accurate and fit in your frame. The link to our website will be in the description below. Do you enjoy cool glass projects? Make sure you subscribe to our channel to stay updated to unique glass, ideas, and projects. We are using our Glass Smart 3mm for this project, but after we finished it, we realized that the dielectric beam splitter would have been a better choice. Step 9. Clean the glass. You can use ammonia-free glass cleaner to clean the glass and we wipe it down with a microfiber cloth. Step 10. Move the glass into the frame. Step 11. Measure the remaining height of the frame to cut the border that will hold the first pane of glass securely. From the top of the glass to the back of the frame, the depth turned out to be 5 eighths. Then we thought 3 fourths of an inch would be sufficient to hold the material without blocking the view of the TV or ruin the mirror effect. This also provides a custom area to adhere the lights to. Step 12. Cut frame sticks to start the border. In this step, we use extra frame sticks that we already had. You can use any type of wood that you can get a hold of if you don't have any extra frame sticks. We cut the frame sticks a few inches larger than the overall size because we will be trimming them down to their exact size later. Step 13. 
Trim the frame sticks with the table saw to the measurement obtained earlier in step 11. Use the table saw to trim down the extra wood to 5 eighths. After that, we trim it to 3 fourths so the overall stick size is 5 eighths by 3 fourths. We will get the exact lengths in the next step. Step 14. Measure the inside length of the frame to cut the border to size. We started off getting one size at a time. The first stick was 53 inches and 5 sixteenths. Step 15a. Cut the border to size. Cut the stick to the measurement that you just got. Then place it in the frame. Ideally, you want it to have a snug fit. Then, measure the second size. Once the first one is in place and fits, it turned out to be 29 inches. Step 15B, label the top of the border. We chose to label the top of the border with a T to ensure that each stick goes in the direction we intended it to. Step 16, create an outline for the light cord. We used a Dremel tool with a sanding bit attached to it. We lined up where we wanted the cord to travel through the frame that would hide the power connection but would still make it easily accessible. Then we measured on our TV frame where the power cord for the LED is going to travel. We wanted to keep it hidden, so we decided to bevel out the frame to fit the wire and drill a hole in to feed the cord through to have a hidden power connection. Step 17, spray paint the border black to match the frame. Using flat black spray paint, we painted the sides and bottom of the border sticks. This is where the T labeled on each stick can help you visualize what needs to be painted. Step 18, clean the glass. Any type of debris or dust could ruin the illusion. Step 19, nail in the borders to the frame. We placed the dry border sticks into the frame and connected our nail gun to our air compressor. We used five nails on the long sides and four on the short. Step 20, flatten the nails to make them flush with the frame. When we installed the border, the nail gun was at an angle so the nails didn't go in completely and we needed a flush finish to install the lights so we just went ahead and hammered them in the rest of the way for our next step. Step 21. Apply the LED light strip. We aligned the LED light strip around the inside of the frame in the direction we decided we wanted the lights to run. Then we removed the backing of the lights to adhere them onto the frame. We made sure the corners were as tight as possible to help with the effect. Once everything was sealed together, we cut the strip right after it went around the last corner. Make sure when you are cutting the strip that you cut it where the manufacturer instructs you to. Step 22, glue the second frame onto the first frame. We had two people hold the frame up so we could wiggle in the wire to the LED light strip. 
Once the cord was through, we used Type On 3 to glue the two frames together. Then we clamped it down and let it dry. Step 23, measure the inside of the second frame for the second pane of glass. Take a tape measure and measure the inside of the frame like you did in the first pane of glass. This is a repeated process of that step. Step 24, cut the second pane of glass. When cutting glass, make sure you wear proper safety equipment. We are using our smart three millimeter glass for the second pane, just like we did the first. For large sheets, you can use a hand sander with a 120 grit sandpaper. Step 25, place in the second pane of glass. As you can see, the two glasses on top of each other with the lights in between creates an infinity effect when the lights are turned on. This is because our smart glass is both transparent and reflective. Therefore, you can see through it, but the lights also reflect off of the glass. Step 26. Clean the TV screen and place in the TV. We use an acrylic plastic cleaner to clean the TV screen with a microfiber cloth. When placing the TV inside of the frame, we put the top in first, then gently lower down the bottom. Step 27. Spray paint the corner brackets. We thought the corner brackets might be visible from the side, so we decided to spray paint them black to match the frame. This would also give it a cool look if you were to display the back of the TV. Step 28, get measurements for the Z-Wire brackets. We measure from corner bracket to corner bracket to get the size we want for the Z-Bar. We do both sides and the top of the TV. Step 29, cut and sand the Z-Bar brackets. We cut the Z-Bars using our miter saw. Then we sand it down the edges and sand it down the surface to remove any contaminants so when we spray paint it, the paint would adhere better to the aluminum. Step 30. Paint the Z-Wires black to match the frame. Step 31. Attach the corner brackets. First, you want to pre-drill the holes, then drill in the corner brackets. We are using 2.5 inch flat corner brackets. Step 32. Attach the Z-Bar brackets. Using a pre-drill, pre-drill in all of the holes. We like to use a pan head screws to have more of a clamping effect when the screws are installed. Customization of the frame. Many of our clients ask, how can I order a full system or just the frame by itself? Many people prefer the convenience of ordering an entire system, which includes the TV built into the frame. Alternatively, you can order the frame by itself for a new construction or remodeling project. We provide a full step-by-step -step instructions below for projects where you're building the frame yourself. Features. By default, we use the latest Samsung Smart TV which offers exceptional brightness and built-in apps to display your content. Samsung QLED TVs offer flawless picture clarity with an extremely wide viewing angle, so you'll see a clear picture no matter where you're standing in the room. It can connect via Wi-Fi or you can wire it up to your cable box or your internet. If you prefer a different brand such as Sony or LG, contact us with the model of your choice for a custom quote. One of the coolest features of our holographic TV is the easy installation. We can design your system to hang on the wall or recess in the wall for a seamless appearance. If you're working on a renovation project and looking for a super simple way to add a frame TV, you're going to love the simplicity of our ultra thin wall mount. Pricing and ordering at twowaymirrors.com. For pricing, you can use our online calculator at twowaymirrors.com or you can contact us at sales at twowaymirrors.com. 
please feel free to send drawings of your project so we can help you with a fast and accurate quote. Shipping. All of our products are fully created and insured to ensure they arrive unbroken. We're glad to quote White Glove Deliveries if you need additional help at the time of delivery. For extra inspiration, I've linked below to the celebrity project we've worked on for the past 15 years, so you can see the product in action. If you need any help with your project, we're glad to help. Hit us up on our website, twowaymirrors.com, or shoot us an email. Until next time, I'm Hannah, and I'm Bailey, and we'll be seeing you in our next video.